Hello, Parkview family. Happy Wednesday. So glad that you're with us here online for online Bible study. If you don't mind, go ahead and like and share the broadcast. Uh, we're going to continue on uh, prayer tonight, and somebody needs to hear what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the will of God. We're going to talk about the timing of the Lord, and, and then there's a surprise uh, one that we're going to talk about. I won't mention that just yet, but we are going to look at spe- uh, a special couple specific things, I'll get out here in a second, that relate to uh, prayer uh, when we're talking about believing God, trusting God. We're also going to talk about in the future hindrances to prayer, which also can affect that. So I'll touch that on that tonight, but I will not go in depth with that, but we will talk about that, hindrances to prayer. There are things that we allow to happen that actually, according to the scripture, can hinder our prayer life and our prayers. And so uh, we will talk about that. We mentioned one of those last week and uh, talk about forgiveness and those kind of things. But we will talk about that in the future. I don't know if that will be next week or not, just kind of just going on the leading of the Holy Spirit. But we will talk about some hindrances. So we're going to look at some specific things uh, tonight, and then there's some more things to come. Then we're still going to talk about prayer as war. And, uh, and some other aspects of prayer. So there's still a lot of good stuff for us to talk about in relationship to prayer. Prayer is one of our most valuable resources that we have. And it is one that Satan often fights against us to try to keep us from praying. Tries to tell us that it's wasted time. We could be doing something else. Have you ever been praying and been distracted? You ever uh, wanted to pray and then all of a sudden your phone starts to ring or, or, or somebody calls or, or uh, somebody visits or you think, oh man, I could be doing this or I could be doing that? That's because prayer is such a valuable resource to us that Satan will try to do anything to distract us. Plus, we live, we live in the most technological time, which should actually make things easier, yet we are more stressed and we seem to have less time than ever before. And Satan tries to take advantage of those things as well. But we're going to talk about that in the future as it relates to hindrances to prayer. And tonight we're going to look at these three aspects. But before we do, let me just give you a couple of announcements because we flipped the script here uh, as it relates to when we're praying. We pray at the end through this um, teaching. So let's just go over a couple announcements as people are gathering in. You're liking and sharing the broadcast. You're texting somebody right now and telling them, hey, it's time for church or you're uh, giving them a quick phone call. Don't stay on there and gab the whole time. Just give them a quick call, text, uh, a Facebook message, like and share the broadcast as we do these announcements so we can get as many people in to the Bible study um, that want to be here tonight. So Spring Fling, April 22nd. Uh, We're taking donations of gently used clothing and shoes, light appliances or small appliances. Uh, You can bring those to the church uh, at your convenience. We're receiving them up until about the 1st of April, I think's our deadline. I don't really remember that off the top of my head. But if you know uh, friends or, or co-workers who are getting rid of stuff, just, it, just bring their stuff. We don't, we don't need furniture, big stuff like that, but clothing, shoes, uh, small appliances, uh, those kind of things we will take. Also, we're going to need volunteers. We're going to need your help. We're going to need our Parkview family to be part of this. And uh, so no matter uh, what your physical capacity is, I know that we're going to have something that each of us can do. So you may say, well, you know, I'm, I'm physically limited in some way. Uh, well, I know that you'll be able to help us in one way or another because we have uh, different things to do on every level. So uh, there'll be things such as caring tables, There'll be also things that just point people in the right direction. So I know you can do that. So there's all kinds of things that we can be involved in. And also, we're praying and we're asking God for financial resources. And we're also asking you to prayerfully consider sowing a seed. This is an outreach ministry, which means the entirety of this day is for the purpose of connecting with our community. And we are asking God to help us do that. Well, that takes resources. It takes finances. And uh, every 
everything on, on this day, this Saturday, for our communities, absolutely free. Of course, we're going to take care of our workers as well, and our, all of our volunteers uh, will feed you and do all that. But everybody that comes to our property for spring fling, for kids' activities, for the Lord's Yard sale, for free food, uh, everything we do that day. Face painting is also in our plans. That's one of our goals to have face painting and maybe uh, some other uh, activities there relating to children. All of that's going to be free. So uh, it's going to be just a community day right after Easter, right after Resurrection Sunday. We want you to be a part of that, and uh, all of it's free. So we're going to ask the Lord to help us with resources and finances, and uh, we want you to be a part of that. All right, Port is just around the corner, and uh, there are two ways that we have volunteers for Port. The one is to go to the, uh, the partner church and actually serve the food. I believe that list of folks is full. But we also need to fix breakfast bags that will be handed out uh, the night after. So we serve a meal the, uh, the evening. The next morning, we hand out breakfast bags to those folks who came and, and uh, stayed at the church, uh, had a place to shelter and place to sleep, and uh, so we, we hand them breakfast. We send them away with a breakfast bag, and we actually need to stuff those bags ahead of time. So if you can volunteer on Monday, February 20th at 11 a.m. right here in the Family Life Center, uh, we need your help. We need to stuff about, I'm going to guess, it's right around 100. I think they've been having in the anywhere from 80 to 90, uh, a little bit above that. And it's all going to depend also on the temperature. But So we have to prepare to make sure that we have the larger number taken care of. So if you can help on Monday, February 20th at 11 o'clock, please come and be a part of that. If you need more information, you can see uh, Sister Terry Wiggins. And so uh, please contact her. You can text her. You can call the church office. Beverly can get uh, you her phone number if you don't have it. And you can text her or call her and help us to fill these bags so that we can send out those folks with a good breakfast as well. Let me also remind you one other thing. It's not on this list. I failed to put it on here tonight. Is that we have a, a church meeting right after service on Sunday. Somebody said, Pastor, are we, I, I might need to bring a snack. I hope it's not that long. Uh, but if you need to, that's fine. You know, I understand people take medications and different things. And, and, and you might need, uh, you know, a little boost of energy. Uh, if you need to do that, that, of course, that's fine. Hopefully, it's not my plan anyway for us to be here very long. We're just going to review 2022's finances, let everybody uh, be updated where we are so that uh, you have the information that you need so we can see what God did and uh, also see where we need to go for the future. So that's going to be Sunday following the service. Uh, also, let me just say thank you to everybody who uh, volunteered and helped with Super Sunday. It was a great day. I know we were challenged on, on some things. Uh, you know, weather was certainly a challenge, and, and, and there was a few other things that we were challenged with. But listen, our volunteers did a great job. We had great food afterwards, popcorn. I saw all those pictures. Uh, those were good. And most importantly, the Holy Spirit just ministered to us and spoke to us. It was a great day, and we thank God for His work. And I'm anticipating God to do something again this week uh, as we gather, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go to the, to the Lord with our offering. So don't forget, you can help with outreach. There is an outreach tab in all of our online giving. So you can give through this QR code. You can give through the church uh, website, the Parkview app. You can text to give right here, 757-997-7770. And uh, you can text in your gift. All of those things take you to the right place. And uh, if you'll just go ahead and just give to the Lord. Your tithe, your offering. We are just about where we need to be with the uh, heating and air conditioning for the nursery. Thank God for that. We're not far away from that, so let's pray about that. Uh, if you've given, just ask the Lord to help us get across the finish line with that, and uh, maybe the Holy Spirit might speak to some of you who haven't given yet, and we're going to get that done. We're going to get that done real soon. We want to have that in by Easter uh, for sure so that uh, you know we'll be able to put our best foot forward. So 
let's give to the Lord tonight. However, you're going to give missionary support, outreach ministry, uh, the spring fling, which is this outreach ministry as well, uh, or the building fund for the nursery, whatever you're going to give, your tithe, your offering, and let's just give to God. And really, it's so simple, and uh, we can just take care of that, and, and God uh, will receive that, and we receive that. And thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving to the Lord. God bless you. Well, let me just jump right in here uh, and share a couple things, if you don't mind, about where we've been on the topic of prayer, and, uh, and, and then we're going to pick up with our new stuff for tonight. So we've been talking about continuing earnestly in prayer, how prayer, we need to continue it. Prayer needs to be one of those disciplines that we practice all the time. Some of the other disciplines we don't necessarily practice all the time, such as the discipline of silence or solitude, um, and prayer can be solitude don't get me wrong about that, but there's also times that we might have prolonged solitude or silence, and so there's other disciplines, fasting. We don't fast every single day, uh, you know, every meal, every day. Um, so there's disciplines that are more daily and some that are more, you know, just different times and seasons. So prayer is one of those disciplines that we need to practice daily. So here's what Paul says, continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. To be earnest means to, uh, to continue means to be earnest towards. Notice what the Amplified Bible says, be persistent and devoted. We talked about these three places where we're told to continue to pray. Pray without ceasing, continue steadfastly in prayer. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Prayer connects us to heaven. We're here on earth. God is in the heavens. His throne is in the heavens. And we are connecting with God. We're communicating with God. We're talking to God. So when we pray, we're connecting heaven and earth. Notice what Jesus said. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're making this connection between heaven and earth earth. We talked about these, and we're going to dig into some of these a little bit more. Um, Communion, confession, hearing, request, seeking, surrendering, war. We're going to talk about that. That is going to be an important one. We're most familiar. Most people are most familiar with requests. We bring our needs before God, and we should. We're supposed to. The Bible tells us to. But there's more aspects to prayer than just petition or request. And so we've been kind of talking about that and digging into that. Notice what Matthew says. Prayer is something that we do between us and God, and God blesses us when we spend time seeking him. God will talk to us. God will speak into our hearts, our lives. Notice what the Bible says. The effective, fervent prayer of righteous men and women avails much. When we pray, when the church prays, things happen. Things happen when we pray. So, let's pray. We talked last week, and so this is where we finished last week. We talked last week about having faith that when we pray, we must pray in faith. We must believe that God is able to hear our prayers and that he has the power to answer our prayers. Not only the power, but he has the desire. So, we talked about having faith. This, this passage of scripture taken out of when Jesus uh, spoke to the fig tree, nobody's going to eat fruit of you ever again. And the Bible says the next day, Peter says, Lord, the fig tree that you curse, it's dried up. And the scripture teaches that it dried up from the roots. It was not attacked from the outside. It died from its very essence outwardly. So it died inwardly and was manifest outwardly. And Jesus said, you've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. And when you pray, so here's what he says. You've got to have faith in God. And then he talks to us in verse number 23, which I did not put in there tonight. He, he talks to us about the importance of faith. You know, we say to the mountain, be here, move from here, cast and see, it will be done. And then he says here, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So we've got to have faith in two aspects of prayer we talked about last week. That God hears prayer. We've got to believe that he hears prayer. If not, then prayer is just a religious activity, a meaningless ritual. It has nothing of importance or of power for us. We have to believe that he hears prayer. Secondly, we have to believe that God answers prayer. 
We talked about that. I've talked about this survey since I first read it, that uh, only 43% of the people who pray believe that God answers. Folks, we got to be in that 43% because prayer is our lifeline, our communication line to the Father. We have to believe that God answers prayer. So I told you last week we were going to talk about a couple of things relating to God answering prayer. Because I know the conversations we have. I've, uh, some of you ask questions. But I've also heard these questions throughout my entire ministry. What about the will of God? What about uh, hindrances to prayer, which we're not going to talk about tonight, but we will talk about in the future? What about timing? You know, all of these questions about prayer. So there's three things specifically that I, that I think that are important in regarding uh, it, when we remember, three important things to remember regarding prayer. All right? Three important things. Number one, we do have to remember God's will. So we're going to talk about God's will. How do I know it's God's will when I'm praying? Because if I don't pray according to his will, the scripture tells us, you know, that uh, there's no need to res- expect or receive an answer. We're not, going to, we're not going to get an answer if it's not according to his will. So we're going to talk about the will of God. Secondly, we're going to talk about the timing of God. And so the timing of God is, is the fact, and we all know this, that God moves in times that don't always match up with our time. Now, he's an on-time God, as the old song says. But notice what the rest of the verse of the song says. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. God moves in his own time. God moves in his own time. Now, this third one that I'm going to pull up on the screen in just a second is relating to healing. Because sometimes I hear these questions about God's will, uh, timing, as it relates to healing. So that's probably how I hear some of these questions the most. Not, ever, not, not completely, but I hear them a lot about God's will. Uh, is it God's will to heal people? Is it God's will to heal me? Those kind of things. Uh, and so uh, this is a good place for us to talk about a very important issue And I know we're we're not going to spend a lot of time on this one because it doesn't apply to every aspect of prayer. It only applies to the aspect of prayer that relates to physical healing. And here it is, number three. We have to have a good theology of death. You say, Pastor, that has nothing to do with prayer. It it does when we relate to healing, okay? And so we're going to talk about that. And here's, here's one thing that we need to remember. We all know... What the Bible says about death. Death is part of life. And yet we talk about that one of the least things. And it's going to be something that everybody's going to go through. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit tonight in regards to the will of God and God's timing as it relates to physical healing. All right, so let's talk about God's will tonight. That's our first one. How do I know if I'm praying and my prayers line up with God's will? Well, this is an important passage of Scripture here. Notice what it says. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. So we have to ask. We have to ask God to move in our lives. We are not going to obtain through covetousness, through lust. And that doesn't mean uh, sexual lust here. That just means desires of the flesh which can include sexual lust, but it's not limited to that. Desires of the flesh, you know, we, we fight for stuff, yet we, we can just ask God to help us, ask God to minister to us. And then notice what it says in the very next verse. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. So when we're talking about the will of God relating to prayer, We have to make sure that our hearts are right. Because if I'm asking God to do something in my life and I'm asking for a miss, doesn't line up with God's word, or if I'm asking for something that is my own pleasure, something that just pleases me, that uh, we have to be careful because we can be outside of God's will as it relates to prayer. Now, when we say that, 
we have to understand that not every prayer request is outside of the will of God. But we have to make sure our hearts are right. We have to make sure that God uh, is working in us. And we're going to see some scriptures about that in just a moment. So we can, we can ask amiss. We can ask outside of the realm of God's covenant. Or we can ask outside of a prayer that brings God glory. And it just does something just for me because I want to receive from it. Okay? So... That does not mean that God does not answer prayers that we get enjoyment over. That's not what that means. That means that we can, we can pray for things that are just so out there, but it's all, all about us. It's all about, hey, you know, I could pray that I could be, um, I could pray for something that could stroke my ego. Well, does God want to stroke my ego? <laughs> no. He wants me to humble myself. Right? So we have to remember there are things sometimes in prayer that we can pray about that are outside of that. And so we have to, we have to be aware of, it, aware of that. So let's talk about God's will. Therefore, do not unwise, but be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, there is a problem that we have in many places in the body of Christ. We struggle to define God's will. Now, there are certain aspects of God's will that are mysterious, but not all of God's will is mysterious, and we need to understand that. So there are certain things that are outlined in the Scripture. God clearly says, this is my will. This is what I want. This is what I desire. There are other things that are not necessarily outlined in Scripture. For example, when I married my bride, there's no place in the Bible that it says, Terry, marry Donna. But God gives me principles. He gives us principles by which we can use to choose a godly man or woman to be our spouse. And so we use those principles. It may not say specifics, but we have principles which can guide us. And sometimes we make the will of God so mysterious that folks are so confused they don't even know what the will of God is. And really, folks, it's not really supposed to be that confusing. There are certain aspects of God's will that are so plain. In fact, I would say quite a bit of God's will is so plain that we just need to embrace what, what he says and pray accordingly. All right, so let's, let's go on to a few other scriptures right here. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. So here's Paul's prayer for the church of Colossians. All right, the Colossi church. He says, I'm praying that you would be filled with, with the knowledge of God's will. We need to make that our prayer. God, I want to be filled with the knowledge of your will. I want to understand what your will for my life is. I want to understand what the will of your word is, things that you've already outlined, things you've already detailed for me as being a covenant uh, partner with you. We're in covenant relationship through the blood of Christ. God, there are things that you've outlined. I want to understand and have a knowledge of your will. We need to be praying this because sometimes some people try to make the will of God so mysterious that it's like nebulous. There's, we're always shooting at a moving target. And as I said, I know there are things that are not specifically outlined in the scripture, but the principles are there. So there are certain aspects that we understand God gives us guiding principles. But we need to be praying that the Holy Spirit would give us or fill us with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We should want to know what God's will is, and we just need to ask him. God, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. These prayers of Paul are good prayers for us to pray. Now, I, I make them personal. Like Ephesians chapter number 1, it talks about uh, that Paul says, I pray that you would be filled with, 
with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that something like this. God, I want to be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are and the things you want me to know. God, fill me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Show me what I need to know. There's other aspects that we can just pray right through. Like, for example, uh, Ephesians chapter number 3, when he prays that they would be strengthened in their inner man by the Holy Spirit. You can pray that, Holy Spirit, strengthen me in my inner man according to God's glorious power or according to the power of God. God, strengthen my inner man. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my life. So we can pray these prayers. So here we should be praying that God would fill us with the knowledge of his will. Notice what it says here. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Here's what I want to tell you. Don't go to social media to find out the will of God. Don't go to the news channel. Don't go to Hollywood. Don't go to uh, you know, this book or that magazine or this newspaper or that website. Here's how we find out the will of God. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of our mind, we know, is according to the Scripture. The way we renew our mind is we get our minds, our thoughts, to line up with God's Word. Because God's Word is His will. His Word is His will for my life. He wants me to live out what He says. It's pure and simple. He wants me to live out the scriptures. I don't have to pray about certain things. God, is this your will? Because it tells me specifically. For example, the Bible says that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I ask myself this question. Is it God's will to save everybody? The answer is yes. He tells us that clearly. Here's another one, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3. This is the will of God, your sanctification. So is it God's will to sanctify me? Clearly outlined in the scripture. Here's another one, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. So is it God's will for me to have a, an attitude of gratitude? According to that scripture, it is. Regardless of where I find myself in life, I can find a way to give thanks somehow, some way. It's God's will. Clearly, scripture outlines these things. So when we say, I want to find out what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, how do we do that? We've got to renew our mind. So that means our understanding of God's will is connected to our understanding of God's word. We've got to get into the word. We've got to get into the scriptures. That's how we're going to start discerning the will of God. We have to get into the scriptures. Now, let's go to this one, John chapter 5. Because this is a point where some people uh, talk about, well, you know, it says here that if, if I pray according to God's will... He's going to answer my prayer, but maybe I'm not praying to his will. And that's true. We understand. We already outlined that. We can pray outside of the will of God. But notice what it says here. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that he he and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. So here it is. Can I have confidence in my prayers? Well, we should have confidence. Okay? We should be understanding God's will. God's work in our lives. We should understand that. So, Pastor, what if I'm praying outside of God's will? Two things about that. Number one, I believe if you're praying in the Scriptures... You're, you're at a good place. If you're praying in the scriptures. You see, we can't pray out, we can't pray, 
We can't live, we can't act, we can't think, we can't develop opinion outside of what the Scripture says. Scripture must be our foundation. It must be not just something we use to validate what I think. It must be what tells me and directs me how to think. You see, God's not concerned with you finding a scripture that lines up with your opinion. God wants us to live according to his word. He wants his word to be the foundation. So we have to stay in the word. We have to stay in God's will. We have to stay in God's word. Now, when we talk about healing, and once again, this is where I get this question probably the most. Healing. Is it God's will to heal people? Well, if we go back to what we believe in our declaration of faith, this is what we say. We believe that healing is provided for all in the atonement. That's Church of God doctrine. That's what we teach. That's what we believe. That healing is provided for all in the atonement. Now, that's a very broad statement. But that's what we believe. We believe that Every person has the potential to be healed because Jesus provided the atoning work that provides the healing. Okay, you say, well, what about people that we pray for that are not healed? Okay, let's ask ourselves this question or let's answer this question like this. There are many reasons, or maybe I shouldn't use the word many. There are several reasons why a person may not be healed. And so we have to examine that. So I can't answer that specifically based on one example. Because it could be a lot of things. People don't like for me to say this. And when I say this, people say, well, don't. A lot of times people say, well, don't say that. Okay, well, I have to say it because it's true. Number one, it can be a lack of faith. Number two, it can be a lack of a, a proper understanding of Scripture. Number three, there could be some sort of hindrance such as unforgiveness or bitterness. So there are three things just right off the top of my head that we can talk about that can hinder prayer for healing. And I know there's others. But, but for me, and this is not a salvation issue, if you choose not to live out your faith this way, that's fine, okay? I believe... That when Jesus died for all, he also bore stripes for all to be healed. And I believe that every person has the potential to be healed. I know that not everybody is healed. I don't consider that to be necessarily a lack of God's desire. I look at that to be more a lack of us in some capacity or some way. Now, that may not appease everybody, and I understand that. So, that's just what I, I believe, that everybody has the potential to be healed. We know that not everybody is healed. And we're going to talk about that more in just a second, okay? Notice here, once again, 1 John chapter 3, verse number 22, whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. So notice what it says here. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. We're walking in right relationship. You see, sometimes prayers are hindered because we're not walking in right relationship. We're not walking where we need to walk. We're doing things that are pleasing in his sight. Sometimes prayers are hindered because we're not doing what he's asking us to do. I can give you an example. I'm not going to use that example. But here's, here's, here's what the Scripture says. Whatever you ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments. Because I'm walking with God, it positions me to be in a place where I can receive God's Word, or God's work. God's Word. We've got to abide in God's Word. Notice what Jesus said here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will or what you desire, and it shall be done for you shall be done. So here's the key factor. We have to have an abiding relationship with Jesus. We have to be abiding in the Word. 
We also have to have uh, 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 maybe, maybe a better way to say this is like this. As it relates to healing, sometimes I don't know that we always have a proper theology about healing. Okay? So, I know I'm probably opening up a lot of can of worms and we're online and so it's kind of hard to ask questions. You can write your questions down and just hand them to me or text them to me. I'd be glad to answer them. But notice what it says here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will or what you desire and it will be done for you. So, if we abide in Christ, I believe Christ will shape our desires, shape our thoughts, shape what we think, what we say, and therefore he will help us to pray inside of what he desires for our lives. I personally believe as long as a person is breathing, we can pray for their healing. That's what I personally believe. Now, let's talk about healing a little bit more. A man who was full of leprosy, I just read this um, today, saw Jesus and fell fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. If you're willing, if it's your will, you can make me clean. And you can make me clean. And then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. This is what I want us to think about as it relates to the ministry of Jesus. We know there were peop, some people that were around Jesus that did not get healed. For example, remember when Jesus healed the man at the pool who was waiting on the stirring of the water from the angel and trying to get in and trying to be healed? We understand that there was a lot of sick, peop, sick people there. Scripture does not tell us that Jesus healed every one of them. But I challenge you to search the Scriptures with this thought in mind. Was there anybody that came to Jesus for healing, that came to him, that approached him, that made the effort to get to him? Was there anybody that came to him that he turned away and said, no, it's not my will that I heal you? I just don't see that anywhere in the Bible. I don't see that anywhere in Scripture. Now, we know in the Old Testament, and so the Old Testament is a little bit different than the New Testament, Old, New Testament is the ministry of Jesus, but we don't see any of that in the New Testament. The woman who approached him with the issue of blood, the Jairus who said, my daughter's sick, uh, the nobleman who said, my servant's sick. Uh, there's plenty of people that approached Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus approached Jesus. Nowhere do we see that he responded to them and said, no, I can't do it. I can't do it because it's not my will. We don't see that anywhere in the scriptures. What we do see is that those who came to him, he touched and healed. And I know this opens up a whole bunch of questions about our own physical health. And we all probably have some health issues and some aches and pains and different things. And and I get that. I understand that. But I can't base my theology based on me. I have to base my theology based on the Scripture. I can't base my theology on a survey. Well, we, Pastor, we prayed for 100 people and 30 of them got healed, so therefore God only heals 30% of the time. That's not in the Scripture. So my challenge for me personally, okay, because once again, you can, you can work out this part of your salvation. You can walk that out the way you want to walk it out. But for me personally is to get my faith to the place that it matches the Scriptures. To get myself to that place. So, I do personally believe that God wants to heal people. I believe He wants to heal so many people that it would astound us. But I also know that not everybody's healed. And so that's kind of that tension we live in. And that's okay to live in tension. See, we want everything to be easy. It's okay to have that tension. Scripture is full of tension like that. Now, uh, let's talk about, oh, I thought we was going to talk about something else there, but let's just go. So God's will. If we can find it in Scripture, then I believe we can stand on it and pray for it. Now, there are other factors evolved in prayer. As we talked about, there are things that hinder. 
There was a woman one time who came up for healing. She'd been prayed for from everybody. I've read this testimony. Uh, she'd been prayed for, for by so many people. And, and so she came up. There was this guy who came to her church as a visiting minister, and he, and he preached on healing, and she came up and she explained to him. She said, I've been prayed for by this person, that person, and I don't know if the guy knew all the people she had said. And, and she said, I've been prayed for so many times for healing. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit dropped something into that visiting evangelist heart. And he said, ma'am, the Holy Spirit tells me that you are harboring unforgiveness in your heart. And that if you will deal with your issue of unforgiveness, God said he would heal you. And she broke down and started crying and confessed. She said, you're right. I have unforgiveness dwelling in my heart. She confessed it before the Lord, but to the evangelist, but it was to God. Yeah, you're right. I need forgiveness. He led her through that act of forgiveness. They prayed together, and she was healed, just as the Holy Spirit said. So you see, there, there, are, there are layers to these things that are not necessarily all nice and neat and in, in, in a nice little package. There are so many layers that can happen here at, when we talk about Scripture. So let's talk about timing. So if you have questions about that, you can text me, you can call me, you can write me, uh, you can email me, you can just come and talk to me, any of those things. I, I love, and I'm not going to debate you, because, uh, you know, and we can gently debate. I'm not going to fuss with you. If you start fussing, I, I'm just going to say, okay, that's fine. I don't believe, I don't think we should gender debate like that. I don't think that's pleasing to God. But we can talk about it. Timing. Let's talk about timing. God's timing. God works in seasons, okay? God is seasonal. He works in seasons according to his own plan and purpose. So sometimes when I'm praying, I have to remember that, you know, God's not necessarily going to work on my time. So, like when God... Uh, when God came to Abraham and Sarah, in Genesis chapter 18, and says, you're going to have a baby. They didn't have a baby right away. First of all, it had been 25 years since they first got the promise. But now, when the finalization of that promise is getting ready to be brought to fruition, God says, about this time next year. Why? Because it takes nine months. God just didn't drop a baby out of the sky. He works in times and seasons. Now, we have to understand that our prayers have no expiration date. Meaning that when we pray and when we believe God, it doesn't necessarily happen. That. Some prayers don't have to happen in a certain time frame. So we have to understand that. But we realize that God works in season. He's a seasonal God. I don't necessarily adhere to dispensational theology because dispensational theology uh, actually does not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Most dispensationalists believe that when the Scripture was finalized, when the canonization of Scripture was completed, that the works of the Holy Spirit stopped. I don't believe that, so therefore I have a hard time uh, aligning myself with dispensational theology because they, dispensationalists believe, most of them, believe in cessation or cessation. I don't believe in that, Okay. But I believe that God does work in seasons. We see that throughout the Scripture. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the sun. He made everything beautiful in its time, the Scripture says. Notice what it says here, Acts chapter number 1. We also have to realize that God is God, and He works when He wants to, how He wants to. And there are some things that He holds close to Himself. He doesn't give us the answer for. For example... Jesus said to the disciples who were asking, when are you coming to set up your kingdom? The Father's holding this close to him. It's, it's his time and it's his season. So I have to understand that when I'm praying for things, there are some things that are not going to come in my time. They're not going to come when I desire them or when I want them. And, let me just stop and throw this in here, sometimes... We pray for things that we um, believe are the way we need the answer, 
And God answers things in the right way we need the answer. For example, Abraham, back there in Genesis chapter number 18, when he's interceding for God, Sodom and Gomorrah, his main concern was that Lot would be saved. But how did he start interceding? He started interceding with 50 people. If you can find 50 righteous people, you're not going to kill, uh, destroy the city for 50 righteous. No, I'll, I'll spare it. 45, I'll spare it. 40, I'll spare it. 30, I'll spare it. 20, I'll spare it. 10. There wasn't even 10 righteous. But God understood his heart. God understood what he was asking for. So, God still destroyed the city and preserved Lot, his family. Same thing with Joshua. When we talked about this at the first of the year, when Joshua said for the sun to stand still, Joshua did not have proper understanding of the inner workings of the universe, but God knew what he meant. And so there's things that sometimes we pray and we're, we're expecting to come this way and it doesn't come that way because God understands what we're asking. And there are times that God, there are certain things that are outside God's will and God says no. Just plain and simple. But notice what he says. There, there are times and seasons that are in his hand, in his hand. Notice what Habakkuk said. God gave a word to Habakkuk, and he said, listen, it's not for now. It's for an appointed time. It's for some time in the future. Sometime in the future. Even though it tarries, wait for it. Notice here, the coming of Jesus. Israel prayed for the, for the revelation of the Messiah. They've been praying for years before Jesus came. And notice what the scripture says. In the fullness of time, when everything was right, when all of the prophetic um, chambers lined up, God sent Jesus. It was according to the right time. There's also timing issues in our lives. And so we have to understand that. But notice what the scripture says. Let us not grow weary while doing well. Let us not grow weary. Because sometimes prayer is like sowing seeds. And the moment you put a seed in the ground, it does not produce a harvest. But a harvest will come. Prayer can be like that. Prayer is sometimes planting seeds. Planting seeds. So, we've got to hold on. For in due season we'll reap if we do not faint. Now here's the hard part. When we talk about timing, we have to wait on the Lord. We have to wait on Him. We have to wait for Him to work on certain things when He plans to. And that waiting's hard, isn't it? It's difficult sometimes to wait on the Lord. To trust Him enough to wait on Him. But this is what we know. Over there where it talks about in, in Philippians chapter number 4, where it says, um, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So there it talks about bringing our requests to God, bringing our needs. Then it says this. And it says, And he will keep your hearts and minds. Bring your requests, let your requests be made known to God. And he will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. What many theologians actually believe the scripture is teaching us there is that while we're anticipating God's answers to our request, he keeps our hearts and our minds so that we can have the stamina to wait for the answer for the request. So we've got to wait on the Lord. And sometimes that's difficult. But it all boils down to this. We've got to trust in Him. We've got to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And sometimes we have a hard time trusting God. We have a hard time trusting God with timing. We have a hard time trusting God to fulfill His Word. Sometimes we have a hard time trusting God, uh, you know, just to work and to move. Here's another thing. Uh, uh, another, another issue I want you to just think about when it comes to prayer. When you're praying for other people, I don't think that you can pray that God would make somebody do something because the Scripture teaches, according to the way I read the Scripture, that we all have a free will. So if I'm praying that God would make somebody do something, I don't know that God's going to do that. 
But what I can pray, I pray this for my unsaved loved ones, that their hearts would soften so that they would understand their need for you and they would turn to you. I can't pray, God, make sure they're saved. Make them safe. God, make them serve you whether they want to or not. I don't know that God, I don't know God that if God violates free will like that. But we can pray, God, soften their heart to the point that they recognize they need you. Bring them to the place of complete surrender so they recognize they need your touch. So like I said, there are several layers on different aspects of praying and prayer. But the most important thing is God does answer prayer. He works, he moves. So let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's trust him. Now, let's in the last couple of moments, let's close quickly uh, in this theology of death. This has to relate to healing. Now, here is the difficult thing. We're all going to die. There's been a survey of all the population. Nobody makes it unless Jesus comes. So we have to get used to the fact that our bodies, because of sin, don't always respond the way we want them to. Now, can God supersede that? Absolutely. That's what divine healing is. And I believe that God heals people. But it's almost at some times that we pray for people and we want them to be healed so they won't die, yet everybody's going to die at some point. We have to have proper theology. Now, we know that people die young. My brother died at a very young age. And we understand that. Those are difficult conversations to have and difficult uh, topics to discuss. We understand that death is a is a valley that we all walk through that is not easy. But what we also have to realize is, is that bodies break down, they grow old, they deteriorate. And at some point, we are going to die. Now, you say, Pastor, cannot, can't we be like Moses? Moses just walked up on the mountain, and God says, hey, go up on the mountain, and you're not coming back. Can I be like that? Yeah, we can. But you've got to have the same walk that Moses had. We've got to have the same level of living out God's will for our lives. Stuff like that. I believe that's very possible. But we also need just to remember that our bodies, they, they are deteriorating. Paul says it very clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Though the outward man is perishing... So we, we also, while we talk about healing, we also have to have a proper theology of death. We're all going to die. Dying's part of living. And I know I shouldn't be talking about death when we're talking about healing. But notice what the scripture says. What man can live and not see death? Nobody. Can he deliver his life from the power of the grave? Nobody has the power to do that. Psalms 89. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment, Hebrews chapter 9. Notice what Hebrews chapter 2, talking about Jesus' ministry to conquer death on our behalf. And we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Jesus died so that we could conquer death. And once again, we're just talking about proper theology and balance as it relates to um, healing. Verse 14 and 15. Then inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power over death, the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. See, we are not supposed to fear death because death is our transition. Death is our, it's the only portal to heaven. It's the only one except the rapture. And we know that everybody's not going to see the rapture. But if we serve the Lord, we're all going to see Jesus. So we have to have that proper understanding and we have to have that balance when we talk about all of these issues as it relates to healing and those kind of things. 
But still, even, even having that understanding that, that we're not all going to make it. <laughs> we're not going to make it. We're going to go be with Jesus one day. I understand we all want to live as long as we can. And there's nothing wrong with that. We should. But we have to understand. We have to understand that death is the only way to get to heaven. It's the only way. As the old song goes, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. We have to, we have to just deal with that. We, have to, we just have to have that proper theology. And sometimes, sometimes we have to balance this out. We don't balance that out very well. And like I said, I know that death is a difficult thing. Grief is a horrible thing. We have our church family, some of our church family going through that right now. And, and the grief of all of that, of those left behind, it's, it's horrendous. I get it. I've been there. Many of you have been there. It's hard. But we have to balance all of this out. And yet, I believe that up until the person takes their last breath, we can pray for their healing. We can pray for God's work to be brought into their lives. Now, I know this deviated just a little bit, but we have to talk about some of these things in relationship to how does these things line up with, with uh, prayer. And so we're going to talk about some hindrances as well in the future. We talked about that at the beginning. And uh, we're going to talk about some different aspects of prayer. But we have to have a complete... You see, sometimes we think that everything's just compartmentalized, and it's not. There's so many layers, and we have to just kind of unpack that and talk about that and, and look through that and, and come to grips with that so that our faith lines up with God's Word. Now, I want you to pray. I want you to seek God. I want you to pray about the things we've talked about today and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me, and if you think I'm wrong, you can just pray that the Holy Spirit helps me. That'd be all right, because I, I want to be, be lined up on the Scripture as well. And so, uh, Let's just pray and ask the Lord to help us. So we're going to close in prayer. Here's our prayer needs, and I know our time is, is just about gone. I went just a little longer than I should have. But here's some folks that just need our prayer. We're praying for the Bagleys. We're praying for Bill, Brent, Sister Ellis, the Fields, Debbie. Uh, I always say this wrong. Beryl, Beryl, Beryl. I'm, I'm sorry, Isabel. I always get that wrong. Shelby, the Goddard, Sheila, uh, Glenn Hollifield. Uh, Barbara, Nikki, Pat, or the Kings, uh, Cole, um, Jerome, Dolores, Shelby, John, Kay, Sheila, Tammy, Jackie, Kelvin, Amber, Weston. Um, we're also praying for Donnie, um, Megan, Sharon, Pat, Debbie, Howard, Richard, Ann, Joe, Arthur, Ben, Ronnie, Pat, Sally, Ken, our shut-ins. We're praying for them tonight. We're praying for the Barnes-Williams family as they're going through bereavement, as we just talked about. Let's pray for our missionaries uh, uh, this week in Romania. We know there's a, been a, uh, a very devastating earthquake in Turkey, but also this week in Romania there have been two earthquakes, one on the 13th and one on the 14th. Um, and so Melania called me and just asked me to pray for her. And so let's pray for them and uh, all of our missionaries. Let's pray together. Let's close out our time in prayer. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us by his power and grace. Father, we're so thankful tonight that we have the privilege to call upon your name. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would touch us and minister to us, God, and that you would work in every heart and every life. You know every need, every situation, everything, Lord, that we are praying over tonight. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would move by your power, by your grace, and by your Holy Spirit. We ask, God, that you would touch our folks on our prayer list. We're praying for healing. We're praying for deliverance. We're praying for strength. We're praying, God, for your grace. We're praying, Lord, that you would give encouragement, that, Lord, you would bring blessing. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would minister to our shut-ins, to those battling cancer. God, we pray that you would just work in every heart and every life. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch those, God, who are uh, just in chronic situations. We know that you're able to alleviate pain, to bring healing. And I pray, God, that you would move upon us and minister to us by your power and grace, by the work of your hand. Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for your power 
for your work, and for your touch. I pray, Heavenly Father, for your divine ministry in every heart and life. God, we pray for our community. We pray that you would minister to our community. You touch our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Touch our city. Touch our region. Lord, we pray for our missionaries, God. We pray that you would minister to them, move upon them, strengthen them, bless them. We pray, oh God, for your divine work, your divine power. Lord, that you would minister, that you would move, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're praying for your touch and for your power. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we close our time, God, that you would minister to Melania, Lord, as she's just going through these earthquakes and and she's a little bit... uh, apprehensive about them. God, we pray you give her peace and help and strength. And Lord, we pray in our final prayer tonight, we pray for Lord, the Williams family, Lord, and the Barnes family. We pray that you would touch them as they're walking out bereavement, God. We pray that you would undergird them, strengthen them with your power, that you would minister to their lives, God, and that you would touch them with peace and strength, And God, that you would help them and minister to them. Now, Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Lord, for everything. Ministering to each person on our prayer list. Touching our community. Touching our lives. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, don't forget Sunday. We're going to gather together in the name of the Lord, and we're believing God to move upon us with his mighty power and his mighty grace. Last Sunday was tremendous, and uh, God is just doing some great things. Uh, The revival is still going on in Asbury uh, College Theological Seminary. Um, There's a group of students this week, and I don't know if this will how long this will carry on. A group of students praying at Lee University, asking God to bring revival. Um, and, and God is just pouring out His Spirit. I believe that we are in a unique moment. Uh, I believe that God has given us an open heaven for an outpouring of His Holy Spirit. I was praying about that today, and I believe that that's just where we are right now in God's time. I don't know how long it'll last. It, it, you know, people are praying for a great end time revival. This might be it. I don't know. But this is what I do know. I believe that God is doing something significant right now. And we need to just partner in and step in to God's work. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to touch us and to move upon us. And so God did a great work in this last week. I don't necessarily come expecting him to do the exact same thing, but this is what I do expect. I expect God to move in our hearts and in our lives. I want you to be here. You don't want to miss it. When God is moving, we want to, we want to make sure we're part of what he's doing. And so many times, if we're not careful, you know, we'll just let things hinder us and Satan keep us out of what God's doing. This is a, a unique time. I really believe this in all my heart. I was really praying about this. I believe that this is a unique opportunity in the body of Christ. Now, we have to decide as part view whether or not we're going to be part of what God's doing right now in his church. I want to be part of that. I want you to be a part of that. 1030 right here. I'm asking you, maybe spend some time praying. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to move upon us with his power and grace. Spend some time fasting if God leads you that way for service on Sunday, and let's believe God for outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Whatever that looks like, whatever that means for us, it doesn't have to look like it looks in Kentucky or Lee University or or the church in Texas or the church in Florida. It doesn't have to look like that at all. All we have to do is say, God, we want your work, whatever that is, and let him do his work in us. So I want you to make your very best effort to be here Sunday, and let's pray. For God just to pour out his spirit upon us without measure and do his work in our lives. Don't forget, Don and I love you. We're praying for you. And if you can't join us in person, you can always join us online. Listen, if you can be here in the house of the Lord. And let's believe God for his work. God bless you. Have a great night.